Hi Aquarius, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. This is Dane. And before we dive into this reading, I have an announcement to make. I am open to private readings. So if you're interested in a private reading, a private and personalized meditation, and a animal healing, just check out my website, daneharttarot.com. It will also be linked in the description box below. Now we're going to be doing a super moon reading for you. And if this reading resonates, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me get back into good favors with the YouTube algorithm gods who I've fallen out of favor with because of the time I had to spend off of YouTube taking care of sick family members. So thank you so much for liking, for commenting, and subscribing. It means the absolute world to me. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be listed in the description box below. Now, before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. This cleanse and meditation will be accompanied by a loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. So let's see the energy we need to be mindful of during this supermoon. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. This is the Two of Cups. Now, Aquarius, this supermoon is on the 1st of August and it's in Aquarius. It is going to be super strong for us. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be intense. With the Two of Cups, there's an energy of, of healing coming forward, but I also see this as somebody coming into your life, kind of from out of the blue, who, who puts on the front of being like this healing, beautiful companion and really has their own ulterior motives in mind. If this is somebody you know, you don't know them very well. So just be aware of that. I don't want you to think like, oh my gosh, somebody, you know, has come back into my life and I know them super well. And, you know, Dane is saying, or Spirit is saying, which is true, Spirit is saying, you know, don't trust them. Go slow, most definitely build things slow during this time because there's a healing that's coming forward. It's going to be very powerful. It's not going to be where you think it's going to be. So just be aware of that. There's a sense here of healing, power, intention, purpose, but there's somebody coming forward who wants you to believe that they're a calm, loving, compassionate, you know, just great person. And they're not, they're just not They're They want to be perceived nicer than they actually are. So be aware of that. Let's see what spirit has to say. Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Here we have blessed. You are blessed, Aquarius. You might be questioning it. You might not feel blessed all the time. And this time period is from full moon on the 1st of August to full moon on the 30th of August. So this month, the month of August, is so powerful and so intense, especially starting off with the super moon energy of, of Aquarius. So that's going to be really, really powerful for us. We are blessed. Just keep on reminding it. You know, just keep on your reminding it. Keep on reminding yourself of this. There we go. There's a speed that we want to move forward. There's kind of an idea that we have, a, a determination, a focus, an insight. And Spirit is saying here, be mindful that you're already blessed, that you have nothing to prove to anybody. You need to move forward, standing in your power, in your essence. And kind of like coming back to basics of what you want and who you are and how you're moving forward in your life. It's stripping away the ego, which sounds so nice and so easy. It's like, oh, just strip away the ego. It's totally fine. We are so 
ego based. It's like, I want people to perceive me this way. I want things to move forward this way. I need to have it like this and I need to have it like that. And spirit's saying, stop, stop and let spirit guide. So let's see what the tarot has to say. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly angels and spirit guides. Oh, I love this. Angels and spirit guides. Okay. Okay. So before we dive into what the tarot has to say, let's look at this August 1st, you know, Aquarius supermoon that's here. It's at nine degrees, 15 minutes of Aquarius. And a full moon is the moon and the sun opposite each other. So the power is really quite intense. That ampl is amplified by the supermoon. So the supermoon is amplifying all of this. Now, Aquarius energy is all about community, collaborations, grassroots, growing things from the bottom up, and that connection too. It's the mind, it's the intellect, it's innovation. So that's really powerful here. Now we're also in Leo season. So Leo energy is heart energy. It's letting ourselves shine, letting ourselves be ourselves and shine. Where a Leo gets themselves in trouble is when they try to be somebody else. And that takes away their shine. It takes away their beauty. It, it gives them certain you know, hurdles to have to overcome. Now what's very interesting Aquarius is that your sister sign is Leo. So this energy here that of, you know, the sun's light reflecting off of the moon is your sister sign reflecting off of you. This can bring fantastic blessings. We see that with the 10 of cups and we see that with the 10 of pentacles, but this can also make things a little bit hard. We see that with the, the king of pentacles and even with the, the high priestess. So just be aware of this during this time. This is a time where the head and the heart can be in conflict with each other. It's a time to move out of the strict logic of the head, and that's controlled by Aquarius. So it's time for us to look at the logic that guides us. We're ruled by Uranus, which is also known as the piercing sword of truth. We, we like things to be structured, like kind of straightforward, say what you mean. You know, I don't want this hogwash. I don't want, you know, a front put on. And we're moving into energy here where it says, get out of the strict logic, which has us stuck because we think things are supposed to be a certain way and move into the heart energy, which can be scary. It could just be overwhelming, especially since we're having an opening of our third eye. We're having an opening of the flow of our energy, our compassion, our understanding. And we're like, wow, no, this is too much. So moving into the heart energy is moving into love because love is the most transformative energy in the whole entire universe. Now we also have Caracla, and I do apologize if I'm saying that incorrectly. She is the, in mythology, the wife of Chiron, and she is also the largest asteroid in our solar system. So Caracla is conjunct the supermoon, and this is absolutely beautiful, beautiful energy. This is energy of holding sacred space, of embracing silence, and also of healing people. So we have this beautiful, sacred, silent, you know, powerful healing energy coming forward. Combined with an Aquarius supermoon, it really helps us move forward without judgment. And that's one of the most beautiful things about Aquariuses, you know, or Aquarians. I don't know the plural. It is that you guys can move forward without judgment, without, you know, rancor or, you know, kind of false airs. You don't have those false airs. A negative Aquarius will, I know people are, you know, saying, no, Dane, you're wrong. A negative Aquarius will, but when you're in alignment with you, there's just a beauty, there's a knowledge, there's a knowing to you that's also just absolutely exquisite. So embrace it. Now the North Lunar Node is conjunct the dwarf planet Eris. Eris in mythology is the warrior sister of Mars. And Eris leads us to truth, to logic and equality. It leads us to, you know, step into our power, step into who we are and what we want. Now, Mars is conjunct Jupiter. This has us fighting for our beliefs and what's correct. Now, what's going to be a little tricky here is that we can find people to be a little bit stubborn, a little bit overwhelming, and a little bit too opinionated. And we can kind of have enough with everybody being so opinionated. 
And that's because we have the warrior siblings of Eris and, Mar and Mars right here. Now, know that as frustrated as we can be with other people, other can pe people could be same frustrated with us. You know, there's a sense of, okay, what we think is correct doesn't mean that others have to believe that it's also correct. And what we think is just or true or what we're fighting for doesn't have to be what other people are fighting for. And so when we come to that acceptance, which comes because of Caracol, right? Because of Caracol being conjunct the, the supermoon, that holding sacred space, that embracing silence, it can come very easily to certain people. That healing energy can come very easily to certain people. And to others, depending on where we are on our journey, it can be a little bit more hard to settle into. So just be aware of this. Venus is conjunct the grand trine. Now this brings visionary energy. This is a beautiful energy coming forward. It is astoundingly powerful and it leads us to being inspired. It leads us to stepping into our power. Saturn is conjunct Mercury, which helps us focus our mind and stay on track. I mean, this energy is the energy of getting things done. Uranus is squared Venus. If you are in a relationship, you can feel restless during this time. So just be aware. If you're in a relationship, you're feeling restless, you want more freedom, you want more independence, it's in the stars that's guiding us. We can be like hit by this and questioning, you know, where is this coming from? If we've been feeling like this for a long time, it can be take action, right? This would be the best time to be like a wake-up call on our shoulders, but, you know, that tap on our shoulders. But if we haven't been feeling this for a long time and it just all of a sudden hits us, write it out. Write it out for a little bit. You know, see where it leads us, see what's coming, because it can't just be that we're we're restless. Now, if we're not in a relationship, this can bring someone into our lives completely out of the blue and who is so different from us that we normally wouldn't, you know, consider, consider it at all. When it comes to financial matters, okay, with Uranus squared Venus, this can lead to financial volatility and be mindful of this, Aquarius, because again, you're ruled by Uranus. So it's going to be very important to be mindful of this energy. Be smart with your money. And Jupiter is squared the sun and the moon. And this thing makes this makes things much bigger. It makes things more dramatic. It it leads us also because Jupiter is in Taurus to leaving behind complexities and coming back down to Earth. And that's going to be really important for us. Now we have here the Ace of Cups. This is God's source spirit. However, you see the divine, the universe, handing us a gift of healing beautiful love. It can come with tears. We can feel overwhelmed at times. We can feel emotionally a little bit fragile. That's okay. There's healing. There's beauty. There's compassion moving us forward. And there's also going to be a sense of coming home within our heart and stabilizing ourselves with what we love and what we desire. There's a real sense here, Aquarius, of what do I love? What do I need? You know, what's worth it in my sacred space of existence? And what is just cluttering it up. We then have the Ten of Cups. This is, this is just a beautiful, beautiful card. This is, and they all live happily ever after. A rainbow is landing upon a cottage. And I know if you've been with me for a while or even a short time, you hear me say this quote always with the Ten of Cups because this card reminds me of it so much. It's a Nordic saying of better to be king of a cottage than servant in a castle. And in our modern world, it can be that equivalent, yes, but it can also be better to be king of your cottage than servant to your castle, right? Going bigger and better, bigger and better. It's not always better. Having the bills paid and things calm, that's better. Here, it's really embracing what we love. And it's not looking at everybody else, what everybody else has, what everybody else loves, what everybody else wants. It's saying, what do I love? What do I want? What do I need? And it's really, it's really being joyful in that. It's being joyful in ourselves. The love comes. The love comes. The love for our lives, the love for our partners, the love for our families, the love for our friends, you know, the love for ourselves. It comes. It's here. We need to embrace it, but it comes by us embracing us. With the Six of Cups, this is telling us, be mindful. We can be really nostalgic. We can say, oh, back when it was so much better. And it might have been, and it might not have been. We might be looking back with rose-colored glasses. But this can also be a desire to want to make things like they were in the past. 
we will never replicate it perfectly. We can get there. We will, we can kind of go for the same energy, but we will never repl replicate it because we are different people and time has moved forward. So understanding that during this time, it can be something we need to mourn, but understanding that and coming to peace with that is going to be one of the most powerful things we can do for ourselves during this time. We then have the 10 of pentacles. I love that we have the two best tens. So we have the 10 of cups, we have the 10 of pentacles. We've come to a conclusion, you know, a completion of a cycle within the heart and a completion of a cycle prosperously with the 10 of pentacles, prosperity, success, bounty, abundance. It's sharing it with our community, our family, our people who are the closest and most important to us. There's also a sharing of knowledge here. This is, I see this. Spirit is saying a wish is being granted. But it's not in the sense of seeing the star or seeing the, the nine of cups. There's a sense here of what I have worked so hard for, what I have longed for is coming forward. And it feels like an answer to prayers, a wish being granted. It feels like I've achieved because you have. And it's a power in that achievement that we are moving forward in. We're also finding that there's a certain knowledge that we have now, a certain knowledge that we didn't have before. And that's going to open up doors for us, but that's also going to open us up to our confidence. Now, the repeat of the number 10 twice is very much saying that this is a completion time. This full moon on the 1st of August, this time from August 1st to August 30th is going to be a time of completions around what we love and around our prosperity or what we value as much as money. It brings us then to the seven of wands. And the seven of wands reversed is a sense of, I'm not fighting anymore. I'm not being overwhelmed by this. I'm not fighting. I'm not embracing this chaos. Your gut is going to be speaking to you. You have a lot of internal dialogue going on, which you can ignore because you might not be ready for it. And with the, with the high priestess reverse, we might not be ready for it. So just, just be aware of this during this time that it's like, okay, this can be overwhelming or, okay, you know, I didn't know it was going to be like this, but there's a sense of I'm leaving, always being in defense mode, always being ready for a fight, always, you know, it's kind of like, I'll get them before they get me mentality. And there's a real sense of I'm stepping out of this and I'm stepping into me because if we're giving all our energy or even half of our energy to constantly fighting, it drains us. It overwhelms us. It keeps us from moving forward the way that we need to. So just be aware of this. This is going to be a time where we have a certain battle here and it's like, you know what? I'm not fighting this. I don't want to fight it. I don't need to fight it. I'm not fighting this. With the king of pentacles reversed, this can be Taurus, well, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn energy, earth sign energy coming forward. Taurus, probably, because it was the first one to come out so, so very strongly. But what Spirit is also saying here is that we cannot be feeling very prosperous. The King Pentacles is the highest court card in of the Pentacles, and just the highest court card, period, in the tarot. There is a sense here of needing to get in touch with our heart, with our heart, with what we love, with what we desire. There's also a sense here of needing to ground ourselves in our root chakra. How do our roots grow? How do we grow? How do we embrace ourselves? What are we moving forward towards? So the heart and the base of us, the, the knowledge of us need to come together. And that's going to be a very important thing. And it can be something that is a little bit overwhelming for us or a little bit intense. So during this time, just be aware of this. We're getting a lot of messages through our dreams. We're going to have a tendency either A, not to remember our dreams or B, not to listen to our dreams. Our dreams are going to be telling us our greatest fears but they're also going to be negating our greatest fears. You know, there's going to be something here that we dream of and it's like, no, I don't want that. But you'll hear like a booming no through that dream. It's like that fear that you have, it's gone. It's no, it's null and void. Stop bringing it up. Stop planting it within you. The King of Pentacles is also saying, when the King of Pentacles is reversed, it's like, mind your crops, mind what you have planted, 
mind what you want to develop because we're not tending to it right now. We've, we've kind of gotten off track. So get back on track to what we want and it's time to make it happen. It is. It's time to make it happen. With the high priestess reverse, we are not listening to ourselves. The heart chakra comes up with, with the color green. Heart chakra is represented by green, but so is our liver. In, in Qigong, our liver energy is represented by the color green. And this is a time where what we are angry about or what we are, yeah, what we are angry about, what we're, you know, kind of ticked off with. And our heart, it's like muddying the waters. What we're going to be seeing here is that I need to embrace what I love. And I need to look kind of dead in the eye what makes me afraid. With the high priestess, there is a real sense of how do I move forward in what I love, in what I desire, for what is being shown to me. The high priestess has the veil being lifted from her eyes and the veil is being lifted from her eyes and it's kind of like a little kid pulling their covers over their heads or, you know, me in the morning, you know, pulling my covers over my head. I don't want to get up right now. You know, five more minutes, five more minutes. That's the energy that's coming here. That sense of, no, I don't want to see. And so we're, we're just seeing ourselves. We're pulling away. And Spirit's like, okay, you cannot be ready. But no, it's right here. And know that this can be knocking us off balance, not accepting the high priestess when she comes to us, when she connects with us. So just be aware of this. Just be aware that we can be feeling out of balance. We can be feeling like, you know, I, I know more than I actually know, or I have a feeling around this, but I don't know exactly what it is. There's, there's a sense of we're rejecting. We're not rejecting. That's a strong word. We're pushing back. You know, we're pushing away from a very powerful gift that can make us feel uncomfortable with ourselves. You know, it's empathic gift. It can be a psychic gift. It can be just an intuitive gift. You know, however we want to say it, it can be, you know, our, our angels whispering to us, however we need to envision it. To, to listen and to slow down and to connect. So let's see what the moon has to say for herself. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels, oh goodness. And spirit guides, angels. And spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. <laughs> angels and spirit guides. Okay. So you know how I said before, well, how spirit said had Taurus come out of my mouth so quickly with the King of Pentacles reverse. Well, here is the new moon in Taurus with the moon card. So here it's prosperity lies ahead. We're not feeling prosperous as we're moving forward. So just be aware of that. Just be aware of strong Taurus energy coming in. Remember Jupiter is squared, the sun and the moon. Jupiter is in Taurus. So leaving behind complexities, that can be hard for us. We like to think, we like to analyze, we like to, you know, look at things, the mind, the intellect, the innovation that's, that's so appealing to us, you know, and then coming back down to earth, that can be something that, you know, it's, it's easier to live in our mind than it is to have ourselves planted. And that might be something I know that's hard for somebody to hear right now, but going outside, standing on the ground, that's going to be really important for you. Grounding yourself. If you can take off your shoes, fantastic. If you can't take off your shoes, just getting that sunlight in your eyes, so good for you. It's going to be so good for you. And if you can't go outside for mobility reasons or you know personal reasons, you can open a window or stand by a window. Getting that sunlight on you is going to be a really, really, really good thing. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. Ooh, and show me clearly. What's interesting is that the card that we have reversed, well, reversed, the extra card is reversed and it's peace. We can be having a difficulty finding peace. We can feel very restless right now. So be aware of this. Meditating, taking time, slowing down for us is going to be super important. It moves us then to reverse a time to give rather than take. This is a time for us to take in healing energy, to take in, you know, compassion, love, understanding, to take what we emotionally need. It's not a time for us to give and give and give. It's like you need a gallon to fill a cup. We need to start filling ourselves up. 
I have a link to Spring Forest Qigong, which is absolutely amazing. Meditating, exercising, you know, being around people that we thoroughly love and enjoy, that can also fill us up. And then we have will. Will we take what we need in order to move forward in the power of this moon, but also in order to move forward in the power of us as we're given this healing, as our emotions are, you know, kind of like the tears are washed away and our emotions rise within, within our grace. Resilience is reverse. We don't feel very resilient and yet we're not giving ourselves credit for carrying our world tree on our back. We're not giving ourselves credit for everything that we have had to endure. Here, don't let your past hold you back. That's the South Lunar Node. The South Lunar Node is also in in astrology. There we go. That is the word. Astrology considered the tail of the dragon. So it's what kind of steers the dragon. It's the rudder of the ship. Don't let your past hold you back from obtaining, and they all live happily ever after, the joy, the happiness, the success, the beauty that's coming your way. Boundaries are so important. You have good boundaries. Keep good boundaries and look at the big picture as you release the past. As you look at the past and say, and that chapter is closed. And that's going to be a very big thing for us to do. We have focused around the the third eye. You know, there's a sense of opening up to what we really want and what we really desire. A new start is coming. We're going to see by the time the new moon comes, there's, there's a sense of a new understanding within ourselves, a new prosperity that has come forward, a new wealth and unexpected wealth and unexpected bounty that leads us in unexpected and powerful ways forward. But there is also this transformation around how we are opening our eyes, opening our soul, opening to ourselves. We are blossoming and we are going to see that we are blossoming. And this is a time of healing. This is a time for healing. And my gosh, Aquarius, will you be feeling this as we let go of the fighting? Because we're really, I just see us really sinking deep into the Caraclaw, you know, energy that's conjunct the supermoon, you know, that, that sense of holding sacred space of silence and of healing is just so powerful. This is a time of healing and that time of healing, the time of holding sacred space for ourselves, for others too, but holding that sacred space for us has us blossoming into people that we've kind of always wanted to be. Patience. Be patient with yourself because here there's a sense of, well, it should already be done and I should have already had this. Calm down. Have patience. You do have patience, but have patience with yourself as you move forward because prosperity lies ahead, even though that's reversed, even though we're thinking, no, it doesn't. It does. It lies ahead. It might not be in the way that we envisioned it. We had a limited imagination, vocabulary, spiritual understanding when we made our dreams. You know, when we sat there, when we were teenagers or, or in our 20s and thought, this is the way my life is going to go. Spirit is opening up that door now. You have more of an understanding. Your life can be greater than what you had ever anticipated. So just be aware of this. There is a lot of change that is coming with this moon. The veil is being lifted from our eyes, even though we don't want it to be, even though we can be resisting it. But we're having a hard time believing in the impossible. And this is here, believe in the impossible. This is the blue moon. The blue moon is on the 30th of August. That is the next full moon. We're having trouble believing in the impossible. It requires too much to change. And how can it in such a short period of time? The impossible will happen. It will. It might, again, not be what we think it will be, but we're going to see things that we thought, wow, I thought this was impossible. Or, oh, wow, this seems so overwhelming. And it happens. You know, or, oh my gosh, it's just a miracle. It's just a miracle type of thing. Our subconscious energy to be mindful of is the Ten of Wands. We're carrying a lot of weight on us. We're carrying too much. It's time to put things down. And it's time to take care of ourselves. Now we have three tens. We're coming to the completion of a sacred cycle. And we're done. So Spirit is saying here, embrace this. Move forward. Be mindful of just carrying too much. Of taking on everybody else's burdens, everybody else's load. Just be mindful of this. 
our subconscious spirit message is mystical. I was going to say magical, but it's mystical. Mystical. Let the mystical, let the mysterious move us forward. We don't have to know the, all the answers, but also connecting with the mystical, the mysteries, the deeper understanding of things can be so important to us and also so intriguing. You know, we can find ourselves really diving deeper into the spiritual, the esoteric, or even the religious if, if we go a more kind of traditional route. Let the world open to us and let ourselves be guided by this world. It moves us to our subconscious tarot message, which is the Knight of Wands. This is fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. This is the Leo full moon, and not full moon, the Leo sun. This is a time where we are moving forward in tenacity, in, in fire, in, in determination. We're really going after what we want and what we need and where we need to be for us. There is a sense here of listening to our gut that is going to be so important. And as we listen to our gut, we also need to, to connect. This is the solar plexus chakra is what I'm seeing here and the sacral chakra. The sacral chakra is connecting with our creative, you know, we our creative energy, our, our sensual energy, a sense of moving forward in our passion and in our power. And it brings us to our subconscious Luna message, which says, have faith in your dreams. And then we have self-reflection reversed. We need to look at ourselves. When self-reflection is reversed, it's like, I'm having a hard time reflecting on looking at myself. Or you can be doing this too much, right? You can be a little bit too hard on yourself or a lot of it too hard on yourself. But self-reflection is an honoring of your story. Your story may not have been written the way that you thought it was going to be or the way that you thought it should be, but it has been written. You know, no matter how far along we are in it, have faith in your dreams because they still matter. And they're still coming true, or they still have the potential to come true. Have faith in your dreams. Just know that our imagination and our, our vocabulary for how we wanted these dreams to come forward was limited. That's why vision boards, we're putting, putting up pictures, is so helpful because it's not, it's not limiting ourselves. It's like, okay, this is like the sketch of it. And then open up the world. All right, Aquarius. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power, intensity, and beauty of this time, of this supermoon, and of ourselves. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Aquarius. May blessings and prosperity always be with you. I love you all. God bless and have a blessed supermoon. Bye.